related to your book, The Fourth Turning, is, it, is this perhaps the end of The Fourth Turning with POTUS as the gray champion? Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I get asked that, and um, you know, I guess one... <coughs> what is one, the gray champion again? The gray champion is sort of the, 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 the ultimate or climactic leader of the fourth turning, who around whom uh, civic trust begins to grow again, mm -hmm. right? So these are the, these are the, the pivotal figures in, in, at times of, of fundamental outer world institutional political crisis when we're kind of tearing down and rebuilding institutions. Um, <clears throat> keep in mind that in our uh, fourth turning scenario, we're just barely, you know, we're just, we're just, we're, 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 we're not even quite halfway through, you know, we're kind of in the middle of this yeah. long era. Um, so I think there's going to be quite a bit more to come. And Trump obviously takes us more toward the climax. I mean, everything about the guy yeah. is sort of increasing confrontation with the expectation that if it goes well, I'm good. And if I totally break it, I'm good. Um, and, you know, as we were just discussing. Yeah. And, and I think that that kind of the outsider coming in who's willing to, who, to take on all outcomes uh, is, is the kind of leader we're talking about. And I would hasten to add that, that, the, that the gray champion figure, you know, when we think of, you know, the Abraham Lincolns and the FDRs and so on and these, these, these pivotal, you would know. Would Churchill have been a gray champion? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, and they're all, they're all prophet archetypes, meaning they're all born just after the late crisis. They yeah. all belong to a generation of sort of that, that prophet archetype. <laughs> but, I, and Trump is obviously a baby boomer if there ever was one, you know, I mean, just everything about the guy, you know, the, the huge <laughs> ego and, and all that. And so everything, and these are what great champions typically have. They have enormous ego, enormous self-confidence. Um, but the one thing I, I say is that these leaders are made, not born. It is circumstances which push them into making the right decision. It's not because they're brilliant from the beginning. People don't forget that FDR was widely considered a lightweight, you know, coming out of school, coming out of it with his Ivy League background. No one thought he would do much in his career. Uh, obviously, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and had a lot of appointments and he could, you know, he'd become governor eventually, but he, he was, uh, and he was, he was not even the odds on pick in 1932 to become uh, the candidate. Obviously, everyone knew that Hoover was toast and, you know, Al Smith and all the other guys thought they had first place. So I'm saying there was nothing ordained about FDR. He came in and he ran on a balanced budget, you know, uh, <laughs> platform and uh, against Hoover, if you can imagine that. Um, but he grew into it. He had qualities which allowed him, in a fourth turning, to go the only place where you could go, given the logic of what was un uh, unfolding. And the question is whether uh, a Donald Trump may be that kind of person. If he did, we would see some quite extraordinary things. For instance, uh, gaining trust and gaining voter share, which is hard, as hard as it may be to believe. Uh. Uh, particularly, and I've often said this, particularly if he gains that among the young. And uh, uh, that's completely unknowable right now. Again, I, just to, to, to come in here, what I, what I was saying at the very beginning, you know, Elliot Cowan, he's a big professor at SAIS. He's one of these big high muckety mucks of you know, international policy, uh, served under Condi Rice. And, and, and David Brooks, I give those two examples, believe that Trump is so horrible, there's that kind of this is the high Whig church of kind of George Will conservatism, right? Who just absolutely detests Trump. These are the people you were talking yeah, about before. I've, yeah, um, ivory tower. They expect that Trump is going to be such an absolute colossal failure that he's going to end up impeached now before the end of his first term. <laughs> so I'm just saying when the, when the range of a, a plausible outcomes spreads out, yeah. that is exactly what we described as being fourth turning land. You know, Interesting. when it comes, and, and remember too, fourth turning is public history speeds up. And, and remember, we, we sort of started here about everyone said that we've had two weeks of Trump and it feels like two years. Okay, that's and, what you mean by and, okay, public history speeds up. Yeah, that's, well, a, and, that's and, a good way to put it. And, and this is, you know, it reminds me of that famous quote of, uh, uh, of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, and that is, you know, there, there, are, there, are, um, there, there, there's some decades when nothing happens and there's some years when decades happen. 
And, you know, and, and Lenin should have known, you know, he know, knew whereof he spoke, I mean, given his own personal contact with history. But I think that's the thing that, that when we talk about turnings is the idea that you can have decades like the 1990s where in public life almost nothing happened. You know, it was just kind of celebrity circus and it was kind of on cruise <laughs> control, right? And the government sort of governed lightly and people basically did whatever the hell they wanted to. Uh, and this is when Gen Xers are coming of age. We're in a very different era now. Yeah, I love that. Oh, it's good. For those of you who, uh, we'll, we'll wrap there, but for those of you who have not read The Fourth Turning, like that, that's how I met Neil without meeting him. That's how, uh, I mean, so many people that know Neil Howe, you know, that's, that is the fundamental book that changed how they looked at the world in demographic terms. So I highly recommend that. Uh, the Fourth Turning is the title.